constant binary choices and voicing our equally shallow opinions more loudly or quietly. Most people can't even decide what color to wear or which burger to eat. Well, but does it matter, man? Autonomy is an illusion. What's up everyone, Joe from China Cycling here. I'm doing some photography and video work with Windspace today on their new Hyper Wheels. I thought I'd give you a look. Now, full disclosure, as I explained in my last video, I'm pretty tight with Windspace now. So on the off chance that makes me biased, I'm gonna try to keep this review as factual as possible. Anyone who's been following my channel for a while will have seen the relationship with Windspace growing and that's because I genuinely love what they make and they give me pretty unlimited access to their facilities and allow me to say what I want about their stuff. But like I say, I'm going to keep this review as factual and objective as I can and let you guys make your own decisions. You're smart guys and girls and that's why I love y'all and I hope you appreciate me being honest. Usually when a company makes a product, the marketing team gives the development team a budget. They'll say, we think there's a gap in the market for an $800 wheel set. What's the best wheel set you can make for that money? And still let us make 20% profit. And then the development team go away and test different combinations of parts to get the wheel set built under that budget. They'll maybe try better hubs with cheaper spokes, or then they'll try better spokes with cheaper rims, and just keep trying combinations until they get the best wheel set they can for that budget. However, with this wheel set, Winspace told the development team to make the best wheel set they could possibly make. Budget was not an issue. If you're new around here, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Here at China Cycling, we're all about showing you the hottest and latest bike parts from China that you won't see anywhere else. So hit that subscribe button to stay informed. If you don't subscribe, then you're just watching whatever the YouTube algorithm spoon feeds you. And you're just another sheep following the crowds. You're not a sheep, are you? When you're after ultimate performance, carbon is the material of choice. So naturally, these wheels come with aerodynamic bladed carbon spokes. Carbon spokes have been proven to stretch less than their steel spoke counterparts and have a much higher tensile strength, resulting in a much stiffer wheel. The carbon spokes are super light too, at just 2.6 grams per spoke. As I was riding a prototype set of these wheels way before my crash, I could tell you that this also makes the wheels feel super responsive, but I promise to keep this review factual and shy away from the words like feel. So I'll just reiterate the facts. Carbon spokes are stronger and lighter than their traditional steel counterparts. Fact. However, the head of a carbon spoke is fundamentally different to a steel spoke. You can't simply wacky carbon spokes in place of traditional steel spokes and call it a day. Oh no. Carbon spokes require a bespoke hub to be made to house the spokes. Now, many wheel manufacturers out there just take a rim from company X and then a hub from DT Swiss and maybe some spokes from Sepim and whack it all together and call it a day. Now, to be fair, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a tried and tested formula. However, the expertise needed to engineer your own hub is something else entirely, which is why until now, there haven't been many, if not any, carbon spoked Chinese wheels. The hubs obviously differ depending on rim brake or disc brake options, but inside all the specially designed hubs are ceramic bearings to minimize rolling resistance and save you some precious few watts. The freewheel body is your standard Shimano 11-speed unit, but a SRAM XDR option is available. 
spokes and hubs are cool, but it's usually rims that get all the attention. And when the rims look this good, is it any wonder? Windspace call this weave their butterfly weave, and it's not just there to look cool, although it does look cool. No, if you look carefully, you'll notice that all these weaves overlap at the spokes. This style of filament wound construction provides the reinforcements and strength needed to make a stiff wheel set, while the spaces between spokes can have a thinner, lighter layup, resulting in a lighter rim. How light? The 38mm rim brake clincher rim weighs in at 1,267 grams. Speaking of rim brakes, perhaps the one thing I don't like about the new Hyper is how it's lost its textured braking surface. The old Hyper had a textured braking surface, whereas this new one is untextured. I asked Windspace and they said the braking surface has more friction than the old one, meaning the texturing process is redundant. While I don't have the facts to prove this either way, I will say I think the textured braking surfaces look and sounded cooler. If that sounds too much like an opinion, I'll say that I factually had no issues braking throughout all of my testing with these new wheels. Of course, in 2020, any clincher wheel set also has to be tubeless ready, and these hypers are no different. Due to the use of carbon spokes, the rim bed has to have spoke holes, so you will need to install rim tape if you're going to be using these tubeless. I'm a convert to road tubeless and don't know if I'll ever go back to using tubes. I set these up tubeless with a pair of Schwalbe TT Pro 1s. As I'm not doing that much riding these days, the lack of puncture protection isn't much of an issue for me, but I'll probably be swapping them out for a regular set of Pro 1s when I start doing lots of outdoor riding again. Windspace said the aero profile of the rim is designed around a 25mm tire. The rim measures a fat 26mm at its widest point, so if you abide by the 105% rule, that makes sense with the 25mm optimization. While the aerodynamics are optimized around a 25mm tire, with an inner rim bed of 90mm, I'm sure anything from a 23 to a 45 will work just fine. With my Schwalbe 25mm, the angle between the tyre sidewall and the rim braking surface gives a super smooth transition, which I'm sure is responsible for the aerodynamic optimization wind space we're talking about. Longtime viewers of the channel will know I'm a bit of a weight weenie. Being a 50 kilo rider, every gram I can save on the bike helps. That's one of my favourite things about these wheels, the overall weight. A set of 38mm rim brake clinchers weighs 1,267 grams, and the 50mm Big Brother comes in at 1,345 grams. That's 270 grams lighter than a set of Zip 404s, and lighter than the specialized Roval CL50s, even though those wheels claim to be the lightest 50mm clinchers you can buy. Now, Regular viewers know I love Specialized, I used to ride an LA Sprint almost daily, but they need to tell their marketing department to calm down a little bit. Anyway, these wheels aren't your typical weight weenie part. Many weight weenie parts come with weight limits for their users because they're made of delicate paper thin layers of ballerina carbon fiber. But the weight limit for these wheels? 135 kilograms. It's good to know that if I really let myself go and double my body weight, at least I don't have to sell my wheels. Now, the elephant in the room, the price. At the beginning of the video, I already alluded that these wheels were designed with a price is no issue attitude. The result is a set of 50mm rim brake clinchers retail for 1,100 US dollars with free worldwide shipping. The 38mm version, $1,100. The disc brake version, $1,100. Windspace aren't big fans of marketing, complicated, psychology driven pricing. Just one simple price for the whole range. Now, while that may be one of the most expensive Chinese wheels out there, these wheels aren't competing with other Chinese wheels. Or rather, I don't think any other Chinese wheels can compete with these. No, these wheels are a direct competitor to Kadex, Zip, Mavic, Envy, and Roval. And when you look at it that way, they're a hell of a bargain. 
from my research, the most fair comparison is Kadex. They both use carbon spokes, ceramic bearings, have very similar weights, etc. A set of Kadex 50mm retail for 3,500 US dollars. That's triple the price. Suddenly, the hypers are looking like a bit of a bargain. Now, my recovery is still ongoing and I still can't put out the kind of what's needed to test these wheels. So, when I wanted to get some footage for this video, I found the biggest guy I could to help me put them through their paces. He goes by the name of Big Cat and probably spends more time in the gym than he does on the bike. But at 85 kilograms, he seemed like a good test pilot. We borrowed a bike from Windspace and I taste a little baum from another friend. That's why the two bikes both look a bit too small. But Big Cat put both wheel sets through their paces. He can squeeze out around 1,500 watts on tap and coming down one of the hills we were doing about 70k an hour with no speed wobbles. On the rim brake bike, I set the EE brake pad super close to the rim braking surface to see if there'd be any brake rub. Not a squeak. So maybe I'll make an updated video once I've ridden this final production set on the roads a bit more. Most of my first hand experience was with a pre-production prototype, so I can't really comment on the long term longevity of these wheels. Windspace do provide a two year warranty on all their wheel sets, and they've been making carbon spoked wheels for a couple of years now, so it's safe to assume they know what they're doing. I've also sent a few emails to a few YouTube buddies seeing if they're interested in reviewing a pair, so you should be seeing some reviews in the coming months. If you've watched this much of the video, I know you're an OG China Cycling fan, and in that case, I gotta hook you up with a discount. You can use China Cycling 10 on winspace.cc for 10% off anything and everything on the site. That will bring the price of the hype wheels down to $990. Nice. Let me guys know what do you think. Do you like drooling over this high-end stuff or do you want me to stick to the cheaper stuff? For me personally, I already have a bunch of low to mid-end wheel sets, so it's natural to start looking at the high-end bling bling. Maybe I'll keep looking at the high-end stuff, but if I see a bargain, I'll throw in a review of that too. Anyway, any questions, let me know in the comments down below. China Cycling out.